Warning, the following podcast has been rated R for strong language, partial nudity, and mild drug use. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Adam and Eve, Honey, Hymns, and by the Waldorf Astoria Urinal Cake Recycling Center, because there's a non-zero chance it'll work again, and that makes it worth the investment. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hiya, I'm Tyler the Paga Pega Corn from Triangle Free Thought Society in Riot. I'm looking for that deadbeat ex-boyfriend of mine, Carl. He still owes me for 33 loaves of garlic bread. So let me know if you see him. Oh, yeah. As a pug a peg a corn of science, I assure you, humans did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. It's November 12th. And it's Fancy Rat and Mouse Day. What? Uh, squeaketh, squeaketh. <laughs> I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Samuel Alito's, New Jersey, <laughs> Jim Jordan's, Ohio, yeah. and Raphael Warnock's, Georgia, this <laughs> is The Scathing Atheist. <laughs> On this week's episode, we drink the tears of Christian bigots. Nom, 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 nom. Move to Georgia now. Pause the podcast <laughs> and do it right now. And Don Ford will be here because otherwise I'd have to learn a fucking voice. But first, the diatribe. Well, damn it, if the Democratic infighting hasn't already begun... The progressive wing of the party says the centrists aren't motivating a huge potential base. The centrists say the progressives are scaring the most reliable voters. We've got any number of special interest groups threatening to pull their support for the party the instant things don't go their way. And groups that would have been under existential threat under a second Trump term promising to walk away and not vote if their priorities aren't emphasized. And meanwhile, the knives come out for Biden from every direction, right? Pulling him all these different ways, all under the threat of tearing his coalition apart before he can even make it to the midterms. And all I've got to say about all of that is good. Right? Like, that's how this shit is supposed to work. We're not supposed to put our candidate's name on a fucking flag and a T-shirt and defend him even when he's completely breaking with any semblance of morality. We're supposed to hold him accountable. We're supposed to call him out when he does or says something wrong. And we're supposed to insist that our demands are met because that's the whole fucking point. The whole point of winning the election is to have our guy there, a guy that you can push around in office. If we wanted a president who could push us around, we'd have kept the guy we had. But if you'll recall, our refusal to worship is kind of what brought us here in the first place, right? Look, it's a coalition party. We're not all in this for the same reason, right? That's why you never see us marching in the kind of lockstep you saw out of the right over the last four years. And to emphasize that fact, hey, I'm an atheist activist that's proudly endorsing a reverend for Georgia Senate and sending him money. And if he ever starts talking some shit about how he wants to make the Bible Georgia state book, I'm going to yank my support away faster than he can say amen. Of course, this tendency on the left leaves a lot of liberals wringing their hands. You know, after all, if the other side always falls in line and we're always fighting with each other, how the fuck can we ever expect to get anything done long term? Shouldn't we at least consider taking the tack that's been so successful for the other guys? You know, after all, infighting just offers ammunition to the opposition when it comes time for reelection. And if we just spent four years bashing the Democrats for not getting enough shit done, it'll be really hard to fire up the base when the next election comes around. And while that may be true, I'd argue that the solution isn't for us to refrain from bashing them. It's for them to get enough done. I mean, sure, we got to be realistic with our expectations, but the system gives us too few chances to chime in. And when it does, the choices are too binary. If we neglect to push back between the elections, we've ceded all our real political power in advance. And even though we often treat it otherwise, this isn't some issue that arises from Democratic mismanagement of their caucus or their coalition. It's the inevitable result of being progressive. I mean, it's in the names. Right. If you're conservative, you're trying to conserve things the way they are. You might also want to roll shit back. But the goal is defined by either the present 
or the past. Those are knowable things. When you're a progressive, your goals are defined by the future. We all agree we want to progress. And in most ways, we agree what that means. But that doesn't mean we all agree on the best way to get there. It's the GOP's indelible advantage. Which way do you go is a question you don't have to solve when you're standing still. But it's also a byproduct of our allegiance to reality, you know, something that encumbers Republicans less and less by the hour. There are plenty of policies and policy goals I vociferously defend, but there's none I'm so married to I'd hold it in spite of overwhelming scientific evidence to the contrary. This is not the case for today's Republicans. And when you never have to worry about changing your mind, there's no need and indeed no point in arguing the merits of your position internally. I, I, I mean, this is what you signed up for, guys. We're humanists. This is our lot in life. It's not much different than the strains that arise when you stop counting on God to take care of your life and start relying on yourself. It's harder, sure, but that's just because the job is getting done now. Look, there are a ton of lessons that we need to take away from the debacle of an administration that we're limping out of. But the most important one, or at least the one that seems most important to me, is the grave danger the nation and the world faces when a party refuses to hold its own leaders accountable. If we get so wedded to winning that we can't bring ourselves to criticize the politicians we support, then what the fuck have we won? They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the life and liberty to my pursuit of happiness, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, how unalienable are you feeling right now? <laughs> well, 2020 is the E.T. video game of years, and we are about to bury it. In close. So I guess I'm feeling good. <laughs> In close. Okay, I feel like I'm only liberty because I refuse to wear underwear. All right, well, quick before Eli realizes any of the other reasons I didn't make him life, we're going to pause for a word from our first sponsor this week, <laughs> Adam and Eve. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. And I'm No Illusions, here to talk to you about this week's sponsor, adamandeve.com, and what they're going through right now. That's right, Noah. It's a very... Very difficult week to be in the business of adult toys, so there's never been a better time to support them. Will the products over at adamandeve.com give you the full body and mind orgasm that Saturday's announcement about Donald Trump losing the election did? No, but damn it, they can try. And while we know that anything less than the orgasmic ecstasy you felt as Anderson Cooper got to announce that little orange repugnance would no longer fester in the White House will be a little disappointing, but damn it, you owe it to Adam and Eve to try. And right now, you can get 50% off almost any one item when you use offer code SCATHING at checkout. That's SCATHING at checkout. Because eventually, this pleasure tunnel will open back up into the real world. You'll need something else to excite every nerve of your body. And when you do, Adam and Eve will be there. One more time, that's adamandeve.com. Enter code SCATHING at checkout for 50% off almost any one item. Adam and Eve. It's a slow week for us, but we'll be there. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, Donald Trump is a losing loser that lost. Yeah. <laughs> Face. And while most presidential losers manage to lose all at one time, somehow Trump has been losing for nine straight days. <laughs> and, and, and his lawyers are out there working hard to make sure that he can like lose more in the future. It's amazing. And he's pretty much certain that he's doing the opposite of humiliating himself. And it's glorious. <laughs> oh, I don't care if he thinks it's good or bad. It's it is glorious. It's, that is correct. Oh, yeah. But 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 now is not the time to gloat. What? Oh, oh but uh, no, sorry. I mistook the time. It is ab absolutely a uh, gentleman gloats. <laughs> yeah! Mm, 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 mm. Mm. In your fucking face! Mm, mm, I knew it the mm, whole time. Mm, I knew it the mm, whole mm, time. Mm, mm. Uh, Eli, gloating noise. Good gloating noise. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, <laughs> Tuesday night you face, called me and told face, me you were moving face. to New Zealand disguised as a koala. And if the glue had stuck, I still would be. Oh, no illusions. All right, all right. I don't know why you're... <laughs> but yeah, in an election narrow enough that we should all be embarrassed, America did just barely get their shit together enough to vote against the autocratic theocracy that was on the ballot and in a speech aimed at unifying a disparate and divided people president-elect biden sought a message that would connect with all americans regardless of their race their political affiliation or their gender identity a message that transcended our differences and touched the universal core of the electorate and the message he landed on was quote jesus <laughs> end quote 
Oh, what are you guys going to talk about now that Trump's gone? Do you still have anything to talk about? That's right, everybody. The people of the eagle wings that snapped off the magic lion have spoken. It is time to embrace science. Yeah. This is a serious time. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm the president-elect. Yes, in a speech where the mission statement was a, quote, pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide but to unify, end quote, Biden went on to kind of forget the non-Christian and non-religious people that exist in the country. In a speech that was only 15 minutes long, Biden slipped in four souls, five gods, six faiths, and a big old Bible quote. Now, in his defense, three of the gods were the obligatory gods that show up in the list of things that he's supposed to bless at the end of every political speech. And the soul references were largely, you know, references to the fighting for the soul of America campaign theme. But for fuck's sake, man, it's a speech about overcoming what divides us. And you're quoting from a book that says rape is a property crime against the victim's dad. And that's rejected as a moral authority by more than a third of the fucking country. Think this through, man. Uh, maybe he was just covering his bases in case he accidentally knocked out his running mate. <laughs> well, better hope Burisma pays in shekels of silver. So. <laughs> anyway, I I'm tempted to wrap all of this up by giving the speech a letter grade. But to be honest, after four years of a guy who couldn't get through a speech without ranting about appliances or injecting random segregationist slogans, I'm not sure I can make an honest assessment anymore. Right. Like if, we, we, if we'd been coming off of the Obama high, I'd probably give him a C minus. But as it stands, I'm just cheering for complete sentences. So <laughs> three, yeah. complete That's sentences. A plus. <sighs> and in the five stages of political beef news, members of our podcast listening audience, we have been waiting for four years for this moment. Donald Trump has lost the election and it's time for a glorious nay. The most glorious Christian freakout we have ever seen. <laughs> Hit it, Anna. What are the guys talking about? It's the newest, the greatest Christian freakout. Oh, I almost feel like she should have done the long version with the extra chorus and the drum solo. For <laughs> <laughs> and bringing it down to halftime. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking Nobody? Lighters out. Lighters out. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There should never be anything with a drum solo. <laughs> so, <laughs> Christian freak out. <laughs> so, I've broken down the various reactions to the news appropriately into the five stages of grief. And this was a lot of people. <laughs> First among them, Paula White and Eric Metaxas, who tweeted out the classic picture of President Truman holding a newspaper that says Dewey defeats Truman. Oh, OK, but like, <laughs> they know that picture loses its punch if Dewey actually defeats Truman. right? Like, <laughs> otherwise, it's just proof of life. <laughs> <laughs> they do not know that. But I am looking forward to the infinite mirror front page of like, Biden holding up Trump, holding up Biden, holding up Trump, holding up Biden's be Biden beats Trump. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Next up, David Brody of the Christian Broadcasting Network tweeted very seriously, down finger, down finger, down finger. I believe at CNN has it wrong. It would be more accurate to say CNN projects the U.S. presidency to our good friend Joe Biden, who we let slide by with no serious questions and tweet. What? Not adding, quote, that's you, that's what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the Falkirk Center at Liberty University uh -huh. posted a meme of intellectual luminary Steven Crowder and accompanied it with a tweet that said, it's simple, count every legal vote. Only cheaters would have a qualm with doing so. The American people deserve a free and fair election, end quote. Oh, sorry. Just uh, last thing in the quote. I'm just going to retweet the president. Stop the count. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Next up on our list comes anger. And for that, we're going to go with Pastor Kurt Landry, who speaking as God about himself at a service this past Sunday said, quote, son of man, do you think that I'm going to allow my prophets who prophesied Trump's second term and prophesied all this goodness coming to this nation to be mocked by a mass media manipulation? <laughs> the Lord says, no, I shall not. Wait, did, did we just disappear? Right. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Blink twice. <laughs> this is audio. Why are you here? <laughs> he continued through gritted teeth. For my namesake, I shall protect my word. I shall protect my people. I shall protect my prophets from this 
evil destruction, for I shall pull back the veil and I shall reveal that which is done in darkness for they who shifted the votes and moved the boxes around, <laughs> raised the dead and the dead vote, I why will would, expose them. Why would moving the boxes matter? <laughs> says the Lord, for they may be tricky men, but they shall not trick me. <laughs> End real exact quote. Oh, God. I love it when they run out of Bible words to crib and when they're speaking on behalf of God. They have to like, <laughs> they have to go for shit like shift the votes and move boxes. Around. <laughs> like, you know, like once in a while, God's just going like, and thou shalt taketh the, um, Oh, you know the they, they they go around the thing on the edge. <laughs> is there, you know, you, is there a word for that when you bubble it in? It's not. I don't. I want to say box, but it, some of them are like an ellipse. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh, next up, of course, in the phases of grief is bargaining, and mm -hmm. we've got two fantastic examples here. First up. Terry Pearson's. Yeah, who looks like Judge Judy forgot to become a lion, so that's <laughs> yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. She's definitely a retiree anamorph. <laughs> Pearson's asked God for a do-over. Yep. Saying at a recent prayer service, quote, <laughs> we're asking you to straighten out every Senate race, straighten out every House race, straighten out every governorship, straighten out every state legislature, straighten out every mayor election. Okay. <laughs> straighten out every city council, straighten them out. Straighten them out. Wait, do I? Straighten them out. Got it. Expose it all. <laughs> Expose it all. Expose it all. All of it? Uh -oh. Lord and Lord, if it be your will and if it be necessary, another election? Another voting day? <laughs> Whatever it takes under your kingdom, oh God, to bring it all in line. <laughs> and again, real exact quote. Oh, almighty God, we promise to still say you're omnipotent, even if you take a mulligan on this one. I <laughs> And even if you endorse the guy who drives his cart on the green, we're all garbage. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but it turns out I wasn't the only one depressed on election night. Turns out Yahweh was right there with me. Hmm. At least according to Pastor George Persons, who said the following, uh, again, as God. I don't know why these guys always talk as God. At a recent service, quote, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with what you're doing to my nation, and I'm not happy about what you're doing to my man. <laughs> Now he's speaking about Mr. Trump right here. He has yielded to me. That's he has quote. endeavored to follow my word. And I am not happy with this that is going on right now. End quote. <laughs> I'm happy. Also, in a surprise twist, it turns out God was part of the Lincoln Project. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> and last, my friends, but certainly not least, is acceptance. Presented Without comment, <laughs> Pastor Kenneth Copeland's oh, good. reaction to the news. <laughs> the media said Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 There you have it. A whole bunch of Christian freaking out. We've been edging it for four years. So if you'll excuse me, I need a Gatorade and a nap. And in white and wrong news, I know we're not supposed to rank the races, but white people are terrible. And now we're in Facebook jail. He thank you. <laughs> oh, man. And I know it might seem kind of silly to rank the religions, too, considering they're all pretty much tied for last place in the epistemology standings. But Christian people are terrible as a group. And of course, we've learned that gender is a spectrum, but men are terrible as a group. Mm -hmm. I think we already all knew that Christian white men are responsible for most of the biggest problems in the world, certainly in the United States. But that all became even more obvious this week when we got some demographic data about our 2020 presidential election. Moral of the story, if Christians, white people, and men, or any combination of those were not allowed to vote, America's elections would have so much better results. Well, and, and and really, if we want to get back to even, we actually shouldn't be allowed to for quite a while, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with that. That would 
based on the data, be fantastic. So 200 years and then let's, <laughs> yeah. 50 years after that, we have to be able to say all the rules to spades or something to vote. It's the whole thing. <laughs> so let's dig into the numbers on religion. In last week's election, Protestants, Catholics, Mormons, and all other Christians as a single group, they all had a majority of their demographic voting for Donald Trump. Yep. Mormons were the big leaders with 71% voting orange. Fortunately, Mormons are only 1% of the electorate, but Protestants are 26% of the electorate, and they went for Trump at 61%. And if you just look at white evangelicals, that number is 81%. Wow. So Ooh. fuck all your faces. Well, yeah, but it, it's worth remembering that for all of their talk about being more moral than the other Christians because Mitt Romney is willing to say dictatorship bad now and again, Mormons were actually the least moral when, you know, they could pull a curtain behind them. Yeah. You know, keep that in mind. Exactly. <laughs> and here's how all those numbers stack up in these sanity rankings. The Jewish population favored Biden at 68%. Really? Similar for the Muslim population at 64% blue. Really? And all the other religions combined went 61% blue. That being said, let's remember that correlation doesn't equal causation. But let's also be clear that Christianity correlated with voting for a neo-Nazi. Yep. Even if there's zero causation, not great. And just to be clear... There's not zero causation. No. That causation number is not zero. It's a positive number. That it is. Also, speaking as a person raised Jewish, pretty fucking horrifying that 32% of us thought the problem with concentration camps was which side of the fence we were on, guys. Just uh, oh, yeah. not good. Not good. Yeah. It's 68 feel it doesn't. It, I like, I'd love for all these numbers from that last thing to be higher. And uh, in first place, by the way, in the rankings was... None religion. Obviously. We voted for Biden at seventy-two percent, so we win as usual. Well, it also, by the way, it shows that Mormons are our main enemies. That's the, yeah. the, the, the <laughs> boss villains. It also means that the Republican atheists organization <laughs> is just five super obnoxious yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> they could potentially have about eight million members in their group, but they don't because they're terrible and they lost because they're losers. And speaking of terrible losers who lost. Segue to the opposite. We actually have a couple more big winners. That would be non-binary voters, women, and people of color. 70% of non-binary voters and 55% of women chose Biden. Okay, okay, no room to talk on account of the madness, but damn is 55% low to vote against the pussy grabber. Holy shit. Yep. That's a low one. Yeah, yeah. They needed a lot of help from women of color to have that number not be on the other side. Yeah. But... If men were not allowed to vote, Joe Biden gets 461 electoral votes and Trump gets 71. But even better, if white people weren't allowed to vote, the election would have been 538 electoral votes for Biden and zero for Trump. <laughs> so much easier for Nate Silver to figure out. He's got a little slump going. Nah, doing great. So again, I know it's weird to rank stuff like this, but... Those are the numbers you might use if you wanted to break that rule for a second mm. and do a little ranking. Right. I want to meet the non-binary person who voted for Trump. Do they make attack helicopter jokes about themselves? <laughs> <laughs> and in death comedy jam news tonight, End Times preacher <laughs> Irvin Baxter. Fantastic. I love this show. <laughs> reached his own End Times this week when he died horribly at the age of 75. Hey, there's more to this story, but I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> tempted to just stop talking there and let... These guys have to segue out from that, but I won't. See, what makes this guy's death funny, even compared to other deaths, is the fact that he died <laughs> of COVID-19 after blaming COVID-19 on fornication. Yeah. Literally fuck your face. And the Lord says, homo says what? Wait, what? Oh, damn, I done got myself. I done, I done myself a bamboozle. All right, so in, and just in case you're still having trouble, by the way, laughing at the death of a stranger, I should point out that he basically gave you permission back in March when he appeared on Jim Baker's show. Oh, man, I'm just like, okay, I forgot to grab that silver tonic as I was leaving. You know what? It'll be fine. I'll be back on the show again <laughs> soon. I'll be great. I'm sure you'll have me before. All right, so he started off by citing some statistics he'd done learned on the Google Nets about how few women are still virgins when they get married, and that brings him around to the inevitable conclusion that God probably is only mere days from flipping on that apocalypse switch, and that's when he adds, quote, God may be using this, talking about the 
COVID-19 pandemic as a wake-up call. This coronavirus may be a privilege because I'll tell you right now, there's a much bigger judgment coming, end quote. So, you know, when, when it was other people dying, he sure seemed to think it was a cause for celebration and... And he's other people, so. <laughs> I also, you know, people were like praying around him when he died, and then he probably pooped when he did, and they had to pretend not to smell it. There's <laughs> lots to enjoy here, everybody. <laughs> really. Do not go gentle into that good uh, Andy shitting. <laughs> okay. You know what? That's kind of funny. Go <laughs> slightly more gently into that. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. And in job security news, with less than two months left in the Trump presidency, it's easier for a podcaster like us to get a little nervous. I mean, I don't even know who Biden's press secretary is going to be or how many marbles they can eat. It's probably a boring <laughs> small number. Yeah, right. Remember when chews a lot of gum seemed like a comedy boon? We're going back to those days. <laughs> we need to be eased back into this, like slowly into the yeah. sanity. You know what I mean? Like maybe Biden gives us a guy who does like, only long vowels. I don't know something. Yeah, he's got to have something weird and stupid. Yeah, like, exactly. Like dangerous, exactly. I like but it. It's got to be a beatboxer, <laughs> like a nervous beatboxer. Yeah, okay, like sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe we just keep McEnany and make her tell the truth and yeah. just see what that looks like. I'm so in favor of keeping everyone in the current administration, but they have to work for our side now. They'd They're all say shaking. yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't like that idea at all. Yeah, I don't like that idea. I know. I want good people in the Oval Office. It's you. Oh, but we got a little <laughs> reminder of just how secure our jobs are this week when LifeSite News released their newest god awful pro conversion therapy documentary oh. for free on YouTube. God damn it. Can't we just be unemployed? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here's the pitch according to LifeSite News quote, the documentary's writer, director, and host, Mikhail Lazote, is an independent journalist from Quebec. He's been researching therapies and the plight of SSA, same-sex attracted, individuals for nearly 20 years. But apparently he's not very good at it. Again, according no. to their own press release, in a recent interview, the author asserted that he has lost his employment about 20 times in the last <laughs> 20 years what? as a result of his efforts to protect the right of people wanting to overcome their SSA to find a competent therapist and sound scientific facts regarding the therapy. Jesus. End real quote. Of course, he got fired for being too right. That's what it was. He was too right. <laughs> <laughs> and 20 jobs in 20, 20 years? <laughs> Some of those had to be like bartender, right? You had 20 jobs at the time? He was definitely at TGI Fridays trying to change people's sexuality and got fired. Yes. Yeah. Asshole. That's a movie. Yes. I would watch that. Hey, good news. You're gonna. So, Great. yeah. While things might be a little less terrifying and depressing in the coming months, and I, I do say that with full knowledge of the pandemic going on, we'll certainly still have plenty to talk about here at The Scathing Atheist and our sister podcasts. All right. Well, now that we can breathe a sigh of relief at the fact that the world is still awful and fucked. We're going to pause for a word from our second sponsor this week, Honey. Lou, 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 painting honey on my computer stuff. Painting honey on my computer stuff is my favorite stuff. Lou, Lou, Lou. Uh, Heath, Noah and I are going to get lunch. What are you doing? Oh, this? Yeah, I'm putting uh, honey on my computer. All right. Well, working with Eli makes me know I'm going to regret this before I ask, but Why? Um, have you read the ad copy this week? No. Why? If you have a computer, honey should be on it. Oh. I don't know how, but apparently it's going to save me a ton of money online. No, no, Heath. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically applies the best one available at checkout. Yeah, they, they didn't mean literal honey. Oh. Oh, well, well if it's not the yellow bear stuff... Where do oh, I get it? Bears? You get honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks by going to joinhoney.com slash scathing. Then when you're checking out on one of its over 30,000 supported sites, honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Just wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons for that site. And if honey finds working codes, it'll apply the best one to your cart. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was doing all my Christmas gifts through Harry and David yesterday and honey saved me 35 bucks. Wow, that's great. It's simple. If you have a computer, honey should be on. I think we can all agree 
that line right there is the confusing part. Now, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's free, and it works with whatever browser you use. You can get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash scathing. That's joinhoney.com slash scathing. Okay, well, uh, good to know, I guess. Now, late. So, do you want to come to lunch with Noah and me? No, I'm good. I'm good. You're going to stay here and lick the honey off your computer, aren't you? Uh, yes. And in super-duper computer news, as Christians grapple with how Donald Trump lost the election, we've gotten some really, really stupid theories. The dead rising, double-counted ballots, something-something illegal votes. But mm -hmm. perhaps the dumbest theory to arise so far is that a giant supercomputer called the hammer did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is silly, but... Is it the dumbest? Because uh, a giant supercomputer is way more likely than anything Trump is tweeting about right now. It, well, the, the computer hasn't come out and publicly recanted, so yes. <laughs> right. <absolutely. laughs> Hammer was lying. <laughs> Hammer is sorry. <laughs> so let's start with the claim most recently espoused by charisma contributor Amir George, who claimed, quote, a powerful supercomputer known as the Hammer needs to have a different name. <laughs> has been combined with a software system called Scorecard oh, to shit. alter 3% of the votes when they are sent from local ballot offices to central counting systems. <gasps> the hammer was devised after 9-11 to help identify terrorists overseas. Scorecard was developed by government contractor Dennis Montgomery and has now been combined with the supercomputer. According to Montgomery, the technology has been used in Florida... Georgia, Texas, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona to harvest votes. Huh. And it is imperative for citizens to stand up for the blatant attempt to overthrow an election dramatically won by President Trump, end quote. Right. And that 3% number was set in stone on a punch card so they couldn't rig Florida and Texas, I guess. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> and by the way, if that name, Dennis Montgomery, sounds familiar... That's because he's the con man and whack job who convinced the CIA under George W. Bush that he could decode secret messages to Al Qaeda sleeper cells in Al Jazeera broadcasts, who then used that lie to steal millions of dollars, which he then promptly lost at blackjack. Really? One of the only games you can actually win at a casino. He should have yeah. played at Trump's casinos. Yeah, there you go. He, he actually almost got a Mexican plane shut down. Honestly, the guy gets his own citation needed episode, but... It gets better because Dennis Montgomery is represented by right wing hack and bizarro universe Andrew Torres, Larry Clayman, who listeners might remember for his lawsuit this year against China for starting COVID. <laughs> yep. And for his 90 day suspension from practicing law back in June and July and August also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, these are the guys behind this conspiracy. And if my guess is right, it's going to end up in a Brett Kavanaugh opinion. Let's just <laughs> hope it's not in the opinion that hands Trump the election. <laughs> and in putting the denial back in car denial news tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it, can't, it can't all be good. It's always worse than we thought, right? That's just a good rule of thumb for pretty much all the shit we talk about on this show, but none more so than the Catholic fucking church. And we learned that once again this week with the release of the Holy See's report on Timothy McCarrick. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell, holy shit, what an indictment of how many kid rapists they have that would be. <laughs> but he's the guy who managed to get promoted all the hell way up to Cardinal, despite everyone in the church up to and including the Pope knowing full well that he was a pedophile. I, I'm sorry. He's the American one of those. Got it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. He's the East Coast American. Not the guy from Washington Thank State. You. The guy from Washington, D.C. <laughs> that we know about. That's right. <laughs> right. Like, why are we still searching for good? Why are they allowed to be open still, the Catholic Church? Like, the bad apple in the barrel thing kind of falls apart at this point. Now we're, we're just, like, clawing around through necrotic apple mush, being like, not a rapist, found one. <laughs> See? <laughs> do, we, do we win the metaphor? No, what the fuck is happening? Shut it down. Sorry, check that. This was a baby skull we right. buried <laughs> under <So> an orphanage. <laughs> still looking. Still looking. <laughs> So, yeah, this report was commissioned by Pope Franolana Ding Dong, and it was released on Tuesday. And basically, it's the Vatican's attempt to wrap a lot of super fancy words around the fact that 
they very plainly didn't care. Right. Like, like, like many years ago, I worked fry side at an Applebee's and I was always stoned because I worked fry side at Applebee's. But my boss overlooked it. Fair. <laughs> right. He knew I still got all my work done and I was going to be way harder to get along with if I was sober. So when I went out for a break, he pretended he couldn't smell it. And that's exactly the attitude that the Vatican took to raping children. Mm -hmm. It was a harmless indiscretion. I mean, at least they weren't having sex with women. Right. And look at how caught up. The fry station stayed this whole time right? And, and, until the media broke the story. <laughs> and in some instances, even well after they've treated serial child molestation like a minor ethical lapse. Yeah, <sighs> we, we should be absolutely clear. They wrote themselves a fancy letter about their child abuser that boils down to Pobody's nerfect. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And staying ahead on mozzarella sticks is fundraising for the Catholic Church. To be clear. <laughs> well, exactly right. Raking in millions and millions of dollars for them. And, and I should be clear, the report stated explicitly that Pope John Paul II knew about the myriad allegations against McCarrick and even had handwritten evidence of them before promoting him to the Archbishop of Washington, D.C. I mean, here and there, the report goes to ridiculous lengths to offer John Paul II some plausible off-ramp from culpability, such as, I shit you not, pointing out that while several bishops had confirmed that McCarrick shared a bed with young seminarians, quote, they did not indicate with certainty that McCarrick had engaged in sexual misconduct. Oh, end quote. Uh, congratulations. Could have meant anything by sleeping with them. But ultimately, when you strip away all the fancy verbiage, all you're left with is we didn't care and even now they've only shown that they care about it from a pr perspective <sighs> okay in, in fairness to the vatican though it's hard to keep track of all the stuff like most of their communication it's on parchment sealed with wax carried by owls lots of, <laughs> lots of the mail gets lost <laughs> so did, did the pope know at the time it's hard to say and by the way that's almost literally the excuse for like yeah. decades of mm -hmm. knowing about this guy but Technically, the Pope not for sure knowing about this guy. Bullshit. Right. We, we know that the letter, letter was sent, the letter was received, and the letter was opened, but how do we know if he read it? Yeah, that's it. Kaka! Yeah, <laughs> hard to say. <laughs> and finally tonight, in Do You Believe in MAGA? <laughs> News. <laughs> Ma Maga, Ma magic. Ma Maga. Fuck. It works if when you, you write it out. It, yes. How would you guys? <laughs> magic. Mag Magic. Magic. Magak. We're going to say Magok, Majok, Majok. <laughs> the entire Christian right community turned into Job from Arrested Development last week with a long series of flailing magicians building up to a big reveal of nothing from inside the hat. Nothing, yeah. Joe Biden from inside the hat. <laughs> they all tried a whole bunch of God magic to make sure Donald Trump, God's chosen candidate, would win the election. And they tried so hard. They tried so much they effort. They really did. And they failed. So assuming they're all intellectually honest, and I know they are, we should have a big new batch of newly deconverted atheists coming right up. <laughs> Looking forward to their big concession speeches. Mm, something tells me people who are doing things of any sort to ensure that an omnipotent being would get the outcome he wanted aren't going to take the intellectual high road at this point suddenly. <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be one, right? There's like one guy who's checking out our podcast first thing this morning because he couldn't burst open the doors to the Philly Convention Center with his brain. Hi. <laughs> if, if it's you, hi. Welcome. Hey, Mike. So one of the most entertaining magic shows happened in Nevada where a MAGA hat wearing wizardry team <laughs> showed up at the Clark County Election Department to pray for counting errors. One divine thaumaturge actually pressed up against the side of the building, so the magic was being transferred by convection, radiation, and conduction. Right. <laughs> but to no avail. That being said, the people inside got to see a very weepy sorceress with her face smashed up against the glass like a Dickensian <laughs> orphan outside a toy store on Christmas Eve with tears and snot expanding out into funny circle shapes next to her face. So that was nice, right? Yeah, no, the picture of those idiots was such a good salve for all the people worried about the MAGA army that was going to start a civil war. I'm not saying they're not going to try. I'm just saying we shouldn't be worried about yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, look, Four Seasons Lawn and Garden is the perfect comedy from this past week. There's there's nothing better. But near perfect comedy 
has been the bored, exhausted faces <laughs> of the poll workers in all the photos as people desperately try to crawl through the walls to watch them put an envelope in a machine and then back again. <laughs> we also got some majak in Pennsylvania last week to guarantee enough votes for Trump. Seems like you'd run that play before the election, but they figured God had it handled, I guess. He did not. So Pastor Robert Henderson stepped in. He's the guy who admitted to homicide last month and said his prayers killed Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh -huh. which, according to the majority of the Supreme Court right now, is sincerely held attempted murder. Right? It's weird how it never works in that direction, right? Oh. So strange. Henderson went for some angelic summoning. Here's the spell. Quote, let those angels go to Pennsylvania and secure that election process, that there would be no ability to steal that state away in any form or in any fashion. We say the angelic powers of God oversee this, end quote. Did, did his prayers work then? <laughs> so I'm just picturing a bunch of bored angels putting envelopes into a machine. Dude, get back from the door. This is the work. I hate this. I hate it. Angels were in the Lincoln Project, too, yeah. <laughs> so, apparently God needs to read The Secret of Management and delegate a little more thoroughly. Lesson learned for next time by God. And that brings us to Trump's spiritual advisor, Paula White, who did a sorcery live stream last week. I'd try to describe this thing, but... I'd need to be enlightened. It's one hand clapping. Like there's no words. It's just a, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. She did a thing. It's literally been turned into hundreds of auto-tune remixes as a joke. But those videos are pretty much indistinguishable from the original. Right? Yeah. You just yeah. have to watch it yourself. It is breathtaking. But I think my favorite incantation, uh, we already talked about it a little bit. It was that do-over spell from Terry Pearson's. Mm. Yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes. But if they do get a do-over, I'm going to call interference, timeout, sun was in my eyes, no backsies. So this could <laughs> take a while. Buckle in. Yeah, just try not to be terrified at how many people in the highest level of government think they can bring, but I was on base to the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to try. All right. Well, quick before Heath undercuts that joke by pointing out the dumbest thing Eli ever asked Andrew to sue somebody over. We're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. <laughs> Joe Manji. And when we come back, Don Ford will be here because let's face it, we can't afford Don Cadillac. Because the garbage disposal is not for shredding lettuce. But I clean it first. That, that For the last time, that's not the point. Mm, good morrow, gentlemen. Um, Eli, why, why are you dressed like that? Did you steal Lucinda's tights? She is going to kill you, dude. You're in such control. Mm, pretty gentlemen, I have no choice, for I am the bard. You're the bard. Mm, yes, forsooth. You have noticed mine hairline raises like the <sighs> noonday sun. Thus, I am forthwith destined to take on the appearance of the other like myself, William Bethesda Shakespeare. I'm pretty sure his middle name was not. Bethesda. Eli, if you're worried about hair loss, why don't you try forhims.com? What be forhims.com? It's a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed medical providers and FDA approved products to help treat hair loss. Ha! Huh. Hair loss from the internet? Methinks thou dost play me the wiggle waggle. Wiggle waggle? Hitherto! Not okay. what that word means. Look, 4 Hymns offers prescription solutions backed by science. Plus, 4 Hymns connects you with licensed medical professionals online, which could save you hours, completely confidential and discreet. Hmm, an actual apothecary, you say? Tell me more. All right. Today, Hymns is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hymns will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Just go to forhims.com slash scathing. That's forhims.com slash scathing. 
Full refunded price paid available for the first 90 day supplies. Refund request must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash scathing. Forsooth, gentlemen, I am well convinced. Now, who will cut me out of the underwear I sewed myself into for authenticity? Not it. Not it. Damn it. Can you do it yourself? Forsooth. Eli, they didn't delay the vaccine results until after Trump lost. That's not what happened. Look, I'm okay with it. Fuck Trump. I'm just saying he's got a point. Eli, stop accusing the medical community of sabotaging Donald Trump. It's it's time for Bible Peace Theater anyway. Thank you. But, but I'm okay with it. I'm saying I'm okay I, with I, it. I said stop. Fine, fine, accu- fine. Where where were we? Okay, let's see. So Samuel was a godchild messenger. Right. I remember that. Uh, okay, so then God got mad at the Jews again, so the Philistines kicked the Jews' ass and steal their ark. Right, but then God pushes over their statue and gives them hemorrhoids so they return it. You know, I figured you'd remember that part. Okay, so yeah, uh, ready to move on? I'm just, I would have delayed the results. Wouldn't you guys have delayed the results? <clears throat> right, right, moving on, moving on. Bible Peace Theater. But yes, yeah, delay them. Wow, it's so cool that the Philistines brought us back the ark. You can say that, fellow man of Beth Shemesh. Huh. I wonder what's inside the ark anyway. You want to take a look? Oh, why not? I mean, nobody has told us not to look in the ark, right? Yeah, we have no reason to believe that would piss anyone off. So why not? Yeah. So wait, they they open the ark and and they die? Yep. Yeah, 50,070 of the Jews in Beth Shemesh. Wow. What was in there? Actually, that's a pretty common misunderstanding. There isn't anything inside the ark that kills people. God just kills the Jews for looking inside the ark. Oh. Yeah. But but I get it. Like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, right. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Melty face. Wait, what do you think was in there? Hey, Mr. God. Uh, Yes, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the angel. What is it? Uh, yeah. Have you seen, uh, um, photos? Lying around here by any chance? Uh, no. What kind of photos? They're, uh, they're of a personal nature. Gross. Nope. No, I have not seen them. Okay, well, if you see them, let me know, okay? It's really important. You got it. No problem. Because I'm talking like full goatsy. I I will throw up. Full goat, like someone removed a manhole cover. Jesus. Right, so the Jews go to baby Samuel to see how they can get back in God's good graces. Please tell us, young Samuel, what can we do? Okay, well, first, you got to give up all your other gods. All of them? All of them, yeah. Oh, oh that's man, good. I love oh, my other gods. No, plus, the other gods. Plus, okay, yeah, plus, I have to sacrifice this goat. <laughs> wow, uh, you're like nine. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, I am nine. And now I'm going to ask God to forgive you while I roast this goat that I just killed. Got it. Do do you want help cleaning the blood up? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I kind of like it. Okay. He's a weird Uh, kid. Oh. I'm nine. Oh, no. Here come the Philistines to attack us. Fear not. God will thunder a great thunder upon them, and they shall be discomfited. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. Open the door and the breeze gets in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no. What? And I open the door wide, if you know what I'm saying. Like, wide. I'm nine. Really focusing this week on Sarah Huckabee Sanders' open butthole, aren't we, Eli? I'm going to miss her, okay? Okay, okay. okay. So years go by and Samuel grows old. Rabble, 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 Jews, Jews, why do you rabble so? We want the king. What? Why, why do you want a king? I put my sons as judges over you. Yeah, but your sons suck. You're gay. You are. 
Yeah, okay, okay, that's fair. Okay, let me go ask God about making someone king. Seriously, Samuel, this week? This week you do this to me. This week. Yeah, I kind of figured you'd say that. You tell them, first of all, no, absolutely not. Second, if they do get a king, he's gonna, he's gonna take all their land and their guns and they're, and they're gonna be slaves. I, I, I told them you wouldn't be happy about this. Plus, plus, I'm gonna tell Bill Barr to sue them. Wait, for what? For things and, and st fuck you. You guys hate me. I brought you out of Egypt. So glad we chose Donald Trump as God. Right? Works every week. Yeah. Works every week. Okay, everybody, listen up. Uh, I spoke to God. Long series of proclamations about uh, Wisconsin or something like that. But long story short, he would not be in favor of you guys having a king. Oh, there's a surprise. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, he just wants to be in charge, right? What? No, no. He was clear about this. It's because it's because the new king is going to make you guys slaves and stuff. Oh, yeah? Is the new king going to kill 50,000 people for opening a box? Yeah. Yeah, because that's what God did this week. Okay, probably not. No. Okay, then we would like a king. Yes, right, right that's now. the king. Three king. votes. King. Okay. So now it's time to meet Saul, who, spoiler alert, is going to turn out to be the king. Not sure you have to put a spoiler alert in there for the Bible. I, I, I do for Eli. He hasn't read it. Oh, yep. That's fair. Anyway, so he's the son of Kish. Oh, like, whoa, my son. You, you are, are the most holy of men. No, no, no. I said Kish, not Kush, Don. Oh, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Is Don here for beeps? Uh, it would seem so. I did yeah. not approve Don being here for what, beeps. What, what, what do you want what? him to do? You want him to step outside for the I know, what you're, I know what you're doing, Don. You can't replace me. You can't do Ben Carson. Oh, no. I have the COVID. I will kill you, Don Ford. Anyway, Saul, my son, you are a choice young man and goodly. There is not a man in the whole of Israel who is as goodly as thee. Thank you, Father. But most importantly, you are tall. Wait, wait, I'm tall? Oh, yes, like like a like a whole head above everyone else. Right, right, right. But uh, I have other qualities you admire, right? Other ones? Uh, well, um, no, no, mo mo mostly just the tall thing. Okay, fuck you. Like. If I was going to write a holy book for thousands of years, and I had to describe you. Tall, tall. Great, great, thanks. Tall. Yeah, okay, yeah. moving on. Anyway, I uh, lost my asses. Go, go find them. <sighs> uh, okay, I, I will, Father. I will find your asses, and, and when I do, Use I will. Use your tallness. Okay. So Kish sends Saul with one of his servants to find his asses, and they look and they look, but they have no luck until they get to the village where Samuel lives. Phew, we've been looking for these asses forever. You said it, sir. You want to, uh, you want to just go home? I feel like we're not going to find these asses. Uh, well, you know what, though? I hear that there's a holy man who lives in this city, and whatever he says will happen comes to pass. So and maybe he could help us find your father's okay. ass. S sorry. You knew about a nearby guy with omniscience, and you're just now mentioning that? I was enjoying our walk together. Right, yeah, okay. Wow. Uh, fine. Do you have any money to pay him, though? I'm, I'm sorry, do I, your servant, have any money to pay him? Have any money to pay him, yeah. I left my wallet in... in the future, when wallets exist. When I don't have my wallet. Exist, sure. Yeah, it's, it's fine, you can owe me. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out, for sure. Like, we'll, you know, uh, sorry, Venmo it. yes, you'll pay me back? Yeah, we'll, we'll totally figure it out. Mm hmm Okay. Yes? Can I help you? Yeah, we're looking for my sheep, and we heard you can talk to God, or something like that. 
Oh, yeah, this is weird. Um, didn't, didn't we hire Don to prevent this? Yeah, but if we didn't do this, then, then Eli wouldn't have gotten to write this, this hilarious tall joke in there. Uh, I didn't, I didn't think that was funny either. Thank you. Thank you. Not funny. Uh, and uh, I can think of multiple qualities about you that are admirable. Uh, for example. Uh, Heath. I mean, I mean, master, master, master. Right, right. Have, okay. Have you seen my asses, old man? Oh, yeah. Uh, don't worry about them. Uh, they've been found. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. But uh, you know what? That reminds me. Hey, hey, Samuel. Uh, uh yes, God? Tomorrow, I'm going to send a guy who's going to help free the Jews from the Philistines, so... Oh, cool. Thanks. Also, did you know that Pfizer apparently had phase three results all last week, but they were doing an internal review till Sunday? Uh, is that real, or you, did you just read that on Reddit? At okay, on, on Reddit. Got it. Pissed. Samuel, Samuel. God? What are you doing here? I, I, I just left the doodly-doo. No, I know you left the doodly-doo. I wanted to tell you that this is the guy who I was telling you about yesterday. Y yeah, I, I know. But if you were going to show up now and tell me this is the guy, why'd you tell me yesterday? Hey, don't look at me. This is what happens in the Bible. Hey, um, prophet guy, you okay? You've been standing there in silence for, like, two minutes. What? Oh, yeah. No, fine. Fine. Um, you guys want to come in? Have some food? Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, man, that's really nice of you. I can go for something. Actually, um, Saul, why don't you send the servant home and I can show you the word of God, just uh, the two of us. I, I would like to see the word of God, too. Mm, yeah, yeah, you head on home. Um, I'll catch up with you. Oh. Can I at least get my money back? He, he hasn't asked us for any. Yeah, we'll, I told you. We'll figure it out. We'll totally okay. figure it out. So uh, about those other admirable qualities you were talking about. Yes, um, I'm glad you asked. He's totally going to fuck himself, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. Totally. Damn it, Don. All right. Well, clearly he needs a minute, so we're going to close shop there for the time being. But don't worry. There's still more Samuel to come on the next installment of... Bible Peace Theater. Before we raise the drawbridge tonight, I wanted to let everybody know that the Kindle version of our book is out now and it's correctly formatted. So if you got an early copy that was fucked up, you can re-download that. And if you've been waiting for us to fix that shit, it's fixed. You can pick up your digital copy of Outbreak, A Crisis of Faith, How Religion Ruined Our Global Pandemic Now by following the links on the show notes for this episode. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look up for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Monday, an even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sister show, Citation Data, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd get demoted if I neglected to thank Keith Enright for being so smooth, Eli Bosnick for being so chunky style Lucinda Lusions for being so awesome and promising to be back with more Twim next week she misses you Don Ford for voicing fantasy and adventure also need to thank Carla and the Triangle Free Thought Society for providing this week's Farnsworth quote incidentally if you're in the Raleigh Durham area check them out by using a link in the show notes and if you see Carl tell him she knows about the show but most of all of course I want to thank this week's most delectable diploids who once again I can't thank by name because Heath fixed a bunch of shit on the Patreon settings and now I don't know how to know who you are, but I, I'm sure we're going to get it fixed by next week. I can thank you by name then. Still, I am sure you have very impressive genitals. And if you'd like to almost certainly hear your name alongside there, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode. Or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help with all this money spending shit sounds too complicated, you can also leave a five-star review, like us on Facebook, and follow at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingalias.com.
preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.